Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. For those of you who are joining us today, for those who are watching live, um, it's been now we're entering our eighth session, so things are flying by, but alhamdulillah, we've covered uh, just over 20, 20, so, 20 or so names here, and inshallah, we'll cover three more today. So we begin today um, just with a quick quote um, from the uh, from you know a famous scholar Al Hassan Al Basri, who was from the generation after the companions and the prophet, uh, and this quote, uh, this uh, the the story goes that a man said to Hassan Al Basri, uh, "I'm complaining to you of the hardness of my heart," and Hassan Al Basri said, "Soften it, soften it with dhikr, the remembrance of Allah. The more." the forgetful the heart is, the harder it becomes. But if a person remembers Allah, that hardness softens as copper melts in fire. Nothing can soften the hardness of the heart like the remembrance of Allah. May he be glorified and exalted. Dhikr, the remembrance of Allah, is healing and medicine for the heart. Forgetfulness, though, is a disease and the cure for which the remem the, the cure for which is the remembrance of Allah. And so inshallah, we are uh, participating in this remembrance. And as we are participating in this remembrance, we are not just learning new names or not just engaging ourselves uh, on from our minds uh, or just from our bodies in terms of sacrificing be here, but our souls and our hearts and really uh, making an effort to purify our hearts, to soften them, to make them receptive to the divine that is around us. Uh, so just quick recap, yesterday we covered uh, Al-Alim, Al-Qabid, and Al-Basit. Uh, and the, the meanings of this being that Al-Alim was the all-knowing, dealing with the intimate knowledge, knowledge of hidden, knowledge of the uh, manifest, knowledge of all things. Uh, that you may know, as well as uh, then Al-Qabid and Al-Basit, the uh, one who constricts Al-Qabid, like, uh, like we're talking about the metaphor of a heart, uh, the constriction and then the expansion, that the uh, Al-Qabid and Al-Basit, they actually go hand in hand. They're not opposite uh, and they, they work together, but that uh, Allah at times will make things difficult, will bring us into times where we will maybe lose things and we will just be with Allah. But there's a purpose for that contraction. But uh, at that contraction point, there's also an expansion point. Mm -hmm. And so these names, as with the other names as well, cause us to be mindful, but especially in those times when the goings get tough or when things get extremely prosperous that at the root of both of those Allah is still there so uh, al-alim allows us to know uh, of our lord and know where everything is coming from but also the al-qabid and al-basit let us know in the situation that whenever things do get contracted or constricted or restricted or closed off, or when things expand or are beyond any measure, that Allah is on both sides of that spectrum. So Bismillah, let us go ahead and we're going to begin with the recitation of uh, the 99 names and some good news for the future sessions. Um, I have uh, touched base with some uh, some some of our um, good friends who have been doing some of the nightly recitations and inshallah we will uh, have some guests come in that will do the 99 names so you don't have to uh, see my voice all the time and you know get annoyed with that as as, as bad as it might be uh, so inshallah we, we've got good things coming so definitely stay tuned for that but let me go ahead and share my screen and we'll start with the 99 names here bismillah <laughs> And as always, whatever you need to do to get in the zone, whatever you need to do to just get in that frame of mind to really let these names kind of surround you. If you, if you know the names, if you can follow along a little bit, feel free to do so as you are comfortable. With that, let us go ahead and begin. Bismillah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Huwa Allahu alladhi la ilaha illa hu ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Al-Malik al-Quddus al-Salam al-Mu'min al-Muhaymin al-Aziz al-Jabbar 
المتكبر الخالق الباري المصور الغفار القهار الوهاب الرازق الفتح العليم القابض الباسط الخافض الرافع المعز المذل السمي البصير الحكم العدل اللطيف الخبير الحليم العظيم الغفور الشكور العلي الكبير الحفيظ المقيت الحسيب الجليل الكريم الرقيب المجيب الواصي الحكم كيم الودود المجيد الباعث الشهيد الحق الوقيل القوي المتين الولي الحميد المهزي مبدي المعيد المهي المميت الحي القيوم الواجد الماجد الواحد الأحد الصمد القادر المقتدر المقدم المؤخر الأول الآخر الظاهر الباطن الوالي المتعالي البر التواب المنتقم العفو الرعوف مالك الملك ذو الجلال والإكرام المقصد الجامع الغني المغني المانع الضار نافع النور هذه البدي الباقي الورث الرشيد الصبور So now let us go into our names for today and inshallah if we, we get done in time uh, we can close out with a uh, recitation of the uh, divine names as one. Well. We can start to incorporate that in our uh, daily daily uh, sessions here. So Bismillah, let's go ahead and go into the names for today. Just give me one moment here. There we go. All right. So in the names for today, we will cover Al-Khafid, Al-Rafi, and al muiz So you probably saw these in the slides there, but uh, Al-Khafid is the one who lowers, the one who humbles, the one who curbs. So we've kind of come into a similar name of this in Al-Qabid. Al-Rafi is the one who raises, the one who elevates, and al muiz is the one who actually we were uh, is, is is the one who grants this uh, grants honor the one who honors and the one who grants rulership so a lot of positive things but al muiz is oftentimes commentated and coupled with al mudil al mudil um, which is the dishonorer the one who uh, humiliates and so these two names uh, actually go hand in hand but in our pattern they actually got separated but we'll we'll, we'll connect them in in this session here. So Bismillah, we'll, we'll begin with Al-Khafid. Um, so this, as I mentioned, it's complemented with uh, Ar-Rafi um, because uh, there's there's that balance. So how you have Al-Qabid and Al-Basit where there's contracting, there's expanding, Al-Khafid and Ar-Rafi have a, that same relationship of there's lowering, there's humbling, but then there's Ar-Rafi, which is the uh, raising, the elevation, the exalting. And so the root meaning of al-khafid is to make lower, to decrease, to reduce, to diminish, uh, to, to just restrict, as well as to just settle, like you just set the dust settles. We have the expression that things just uh, normalize. Uh, when something carries that quality of being low, it makes us just, you know, in, in our reaction, lower our head, you know, in order to see it. If we see something, if something's just low on the ground or wherever it might be, if something goes low, our head goes low. And that, that movement, actually, when we think about humility, when we think about what our postures are in prayer, we, we think about going down in prostration, we think about bowing. Uh, there's, a, there's an expressed meaning of humility that is connected with lowering. So it's not just humiliation. It's not just being uh, sticking your neck out. It, it it's actually has a very deep and significant meaning. 
And actually carrying this quality allows you to then protect yourself and others. If we if we really incorporate the the the, the name and incorporating this quality of al khafid and be aware of it, it allows us to protect others as well as ourselves from de a deliberative type of debasement and humiliation, but also injustice, backbiting, hypocrisy. We start to we when we grew up, uh, especially I'm just talking about myself here, but. When growing up, we would be taught that Allah is someone you should fear. Have fear of Allah. Have fear of Allah. Um, that you know, have some guilt. Have have a lot of shame. There's a lot of negative uh, words that were used just in general. You know, it, it, not not sp specifically focusing on one or any aspect of Allah, but just in general, we were taught how taqwa is specifically being afraid of Allah and being fearful of Allah and just worrying about the wrath of Allah and the punishment. So you get a lot of uh, negative and kind of scary connotations around there. But when we fear, when, when should we kind of fear Allah? And this name helps us bring about that when we harm the creation and ourselves, we will be humbled. We will be lowered because Allah is al-khafid. Allah, Allah is the one who lowers, the one who humbles. And so this name gives us caution that we should fear, not because of who Allah is, but because of what we could do and what we can, uh, what we could bring about. So not as a result that we're just going about and Allah all of a sudden just like uh, is the one we, we're, we're, we're going to be just, you know, living in complete fear of, but the one who gives us that mindfulness and that cognizance and the treatment of other folks that if we don't treat others as, as we should treat and as uh, the divine has ordained for us, that then we should be fearful, like as in anything, you break the law, you should be afraid that something might happen or something, you know, in the sense that uh, if you if you do something bad, having some kind of fear that there might be some repercussion in this sense, that fear comes about that if we do something that 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 will come about. So the humiliation, though, that abasement, it really comes to those who are controlled by their egos. And it only comes to those who literally are running with their egos and self-serving who really do go about the creation as if it is it is it is their playground that they have no regard for the uh, the sacredness of it um they cheat and they lie they come up with traps for people they manipulate they do all sorts of things and that's where that humiliation comes in from that humiliating point but if, if some of us make an honest mistake and we we feel that 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 lowered sense that humbling sense uh and we take it as such we take it in humility uh, then we don't get that aspect of the humiliation that comes with it. Uh, but Al-Khafid lowers everything that was. And if it's the person who was uh, who, who humiliates people, who is proud, who is arrogant, who uh, and it is uh, the one who brings down oppressors, the one who brings down the uh, people committing injustice, especially those systems of power. So when you think about movements of justice uh, and, and dismantling any systems of oppression, Al-Khafid has actually that part of Allah that can be appealed to, that part of Allah that really resonates, especially when opposing tyrants or people or systems in power. And so we use this name not to become more distant from Allah or ourselves or even frustrated with ourselves or Allah, but we take this time to listen and to hear for Allah and the parts of us feeling most hurt reduced and affected and when we when we see that hey we made a mistake but we talk to we, we talk to the part of ourselves that has made that mistake we talk to ourselves so often in our society we will make a mistake we'll run with it uh and just not try and deal with it not try and think about it and we we really don't listen to what's what's going on so when we take that time to listen we really then can become better people because after that prostration after that bowing comes the standing comes the qiyam comes you standing up but it comes with a recognized God consciousness. So let us uh, incorporate this name as we as we continue forth, inshallah. And it complements, as I mentioned, with Arafi, the one who raises, the one who elevates, the one who distinguishes. Uh, and the root of this name is to lift up, to exalt, to raise aloft, to raise an esteem, uh, to make uh, heighten elevated and all of these things to promote or to relieve and our spiritual or material deeds, all the things that we do, they can lead to elevation, this Ar-Rafid, or they can lead to humbling and reducing as we saw in Al-Khafid. Ar-Rafid reflects in its, its manifestation in those who are not only raised in material, 
uh, such as in their their you know their opulence or in their physical health, but also those who may be uh, bereft in knowledge and who may uh, want to be you know enriched with intellect. So those who are uh, maybe impoverished and they come across wealth or they, they are uplifted, this is kind of a rafi playing in their life. Or if they may be someone who is suffering from a physical ailment and they are cured, or if it may be somebody that is seeking knowledge or is just someone that is in ignorance. And we, we see that in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this was a society in ignorance, but the bestowing of knowledge, the accepting of knowledge and of awareness of Allah was a form of this rafa, this raising. And those who have uh, lost their way or those who feel that they're off the path, they feel that they've come back to the path, that's also a form of that exaltation. So don't just think a, you know, just one, one way kind of uh, vertical uh, exaltation that's kind of going on. You think about a exaltation that is holistic in the sense of the metaphor as well as the literal. And so we might be raised in any things in or any of the areas of like possessions, health, spirituality, and we may show ourselves worthier of them. You know, we, 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 that, and it's, 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 it's done so that we might be showing ourselves as worthy of them, but then also how we, how can we use these to help other people? Again, no gift is given just so that we can uh, keep it to ourselves at some way, shape or form. It should also be reciprocated or uh, be, been given thanks to or expressed with those around and shared. And so Arafi really leads to, as with so many of these other names, heightened levels of uh, consciousness, elevating people, not just in terms of their internal spirituality, but then causing us to then help elevate those around us who may be weak, who may be sick, who may be oppressed, and those who are in need of support and on the margins. So Arafe really gives us that strength to go out and to lift up other people as we've been lifted up. And lastly, uh, Allah elevates those whose tongue is gentle, whose mouths speak good, who, who, who abstain from and refrain from that which would be vain and talk, that which harms people with their tongues, and who would rather give than take, who don't let pride and arrogance harden their hearts, and who, covers, uh, who cover others' mistakes instead of going out and just shaming them and dragging them, and who build rather than destroy, and who are strong, friendly, and kind, and not mean, harsh, or dismissing. So we, we, we think into ourselves that this name of exaltation comes to those who act in a way that helps raise up the people around them that are already being conduits for good, that these people are then raised up, but also those of us who may feel lost, those of us who may feel that we are bereft of any kind of wealth or any kind of materials or anything like that, if we sincerely uh, hold to that faith that Allah is the one that bestows, Allah is the one that will soften our hearts, then we too can have access to that raising. But in that raising, it's not just us who's being raised. When we are raised, we subsequently then go out and now we raise people on the other side. We, we use our gifts, we use that which has been given to us to uplift that which is around us. So inshallah, we, we incorporate this name as we go forth. And lastly, we cover al Moriz. al Moriz is the one who grants honor, the one who honors and the one who grants rulership. And you know, you see this uh, complementing with uh, Ar-Rafi. You see this complementing in the sense of this exaltation, this honoring, this, this bestowing of gifts. And this name is, as I mentioned, often commented on in conjunction with al the the one who humiliates, the one who dishonors. But as I mentioned, for our purposes, we'll just cover al muris today. But tomorrow we'll cover al mudil and we'll talk about this name that sometimes may may sound like, oh, you know, it sounds a little scary. But we'll we'll talk how this is complementing because only Allah, we realize, leads us to true honor or humiliation. The feeling of humiliation we might feel at the hands of somebody is not that humiliation which we feel when we've wronged Allah. And that feeling of honor that we feel when people around us honor, we don't, uh, that, that, that feeling is completely different when it's bestowed by Allah. And so honor and humiliation, these might be states that we find ourselves going through several times in the frequency even of a day. And these are in many forms in terms of our self-confidence, our self-esteem, our relationships, how uh, we, we deal with others and among so many other things that are there. But as we know, the absolute authority of these, the absolute reality 
of our existence exists with Allah and what counts really exists with Allah. So al muriz is not opposed to al mudhil Honoring in Allah's realm is not opposed to dishonoring. It's not a diametric opposition, but it's complementary to al mudhil Healing begins for us when we reconcile these two, qual uh, these two qualities in this name. Healing allows us to take place when we talk about what is, where, where, what is the wound? We acknowledge the fact that there is a wound. We talk about how do we heal it? And then we work on repairing it. And then we go through the steps to make sure that it is, uh, it, that, we, that we are addressing this properly. So you, it's, it's a, it's a two-step process. You know, any, any time you scrape your knee, you cut yourself, there's going to be a point where you put uh, either the alcohol wipes or you put uh, the neosporin or whatever it might be, the triple antibiotic, and it's going to burn a little bit. And then we start to patch up that wound. So it's a two-part system that, that works here, similar to how al muiz and al mudil go. But we, we, as I mentioned, al muiz here is uh, what we're talking about and is the one who grants honor, but it comes from the same root as al aziz what we've uh, the name we talked about a few days back, which contains both meanings of strength and gentleness and the gift of divine honor and wis uh, brings wisdom to us. It, it takes uh, joy away from that inflated ego. So all the things that we feel like we build up ourselves, it takes those away. And the honor that Allah, that connotates with Allah, that Allah brings comes from knowing first and foremost that everything does come from Allah. And it comes also by then serving the creation. So when we recognize the divinity, when we recognize the uh, gift that we've been given all around us, we also then recognize how, uh, how Allah is responsible for all this. But then also when we serve this with that intention, we, we are being bestowed honor in many different forms. And so, as I mentioned, that service is not just in the form of volunteerism or community service. Uh, that service can be done through sharing your gifts, whether you're an artist or if you are working in a hospital or if you're working anywhere, that you come with your, uh, to your work with 100%. You, you do that with diligence and, uh, or you're sharing your wealth, the resources you've been given. Or even if you have none of that, if you're sharing your prayers, or by taking care of what is given to you, just being mindful of whatever has been given to you and taking care of that. So just thinking about all the ways that you can serve the people around you and the, the, the community around you and what, what you can do. It doesn't necessarily just mean you go check off how many hours you put in uh, or how much money you donated, but it can be so much uh, around that concept of service. And that uh, honor is to serve with kindness in one's heart and knowing that we are all placed within this divine dominion. We are all within uh, Allah's kingdom here uh, or Allah's just dominion. And we recognize that that honor comes from that knowledge, comes from that knowledge that we are not only all different vessels, but we are different vessels filled with that same divine water that is going to be poured back into the ocean from where it came. As we came from uh, the ocean, or as we came from Allah, we will return inevitably. And so lastly, as I mentioned, honor is not just to know but on, and, to see, uh, and to see in the world around you, but honor is also to know and to see uh, honor in others because they are created by the divine. So when we talked about how the 99 names reflects that image of, uh, the, of, of Allah in the sense that these, the sparks of Allah in the world, we see not just people or we see not just a thing or whatnot, but we see a divinely created in entity. And so we give honor to that in its connotation. And as a result, we then know people a lot better. We get to know ourselves a lot better. And as the, the famous hadith is that once who know, you know yourself, you know Allah. So lastly here, the honor that we sometimes attribute to ourselves or the honor in which others hold us to leads us to a distorted sense uh, and arrogance, which ultimately then leads us to al-mudhil or humiliation. So we ask that Allah protects us from the connotations of that honor, that it's not bad to get honored by people of this world. It's not, on, it's not bad to be praised or anything like that by people around us, but being mindful that when we get this honor, it is the, uh, the honorer, the, uh, the al-muriz, the one who is behind all this, that is the source of this honor and the one who is to thank for this honor and the one to whom we give praise not the other way around. So inshallah, with that, let us go ahead and uh, conclude today with our uh, 
uh, with our dhikr, inshallah. And then uh, since we have a little bit of time, I'll go ahead and we'll do the asma'il husna to close out. But let us begin here. Bismillah. <laughs> La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al Khafid, 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 Al Khafid. Al-Khafid, 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 Al-Khafid. Ya Khafid, 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 Ya Khafid. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Arrafi, 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 La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al Mu'iz, 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 Al Mu'iz. Ya Mu'iz, 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 Ya Mu'iz. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. So Zakhlah Khair, brothers and sisters, we're going to share our screen here and we're going to close out one more time with the 99 names and then inshallah we will go about our day until we see each other tomorrow. But let us go ahead and uh, close out with these divine names here. Just a moment here. Bismillah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Who Allah, who La ilaha illa huwa ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Al-Malik al-Quddus al-Salam Al-Mu'min al-Muhaymin al-Aziz al-Jabbar Al-Muttakabbir al-Khaliq al-Bari Al-Musawir al-Ghaffar Al-Qahar al-Wahab al-Razak Al-Fatah al-Ali القابض الباسط الخافض الرافع المعز المذل السميع البصير الهكم العدل اللطيف الخبير الهليم العظيم الغفور الشكور العلي الكبير الهافذ المقيت الهسيب الجليل الكريم الرقيب المجيب الواصي الهكيم الودود المجيد الباعث الشهيد الحق الوقيل القوي المتين الولي الحميد المحسي مبدي المعيد المحي المميت الحي القيوم الواجد الماجد الواحد الأحد الصمد القادر المقتدر المقدم المؤخر الأول الآخر الظاهر الباطن الوالي المتعالي البر التواب المنتقم الأخو الرؤوف مالك الملك ذو الجلال والإكرام 
المقصد الجامع الغني المغني المانع الضار النافع النور الهادي البديع الباقي الورث الرشيد الصبور Jazak la khair again, brothers and sisters, for coming in, for watching. As always, uh, it's it's a it's a pleasure to be here with you. Inshallah, let us incorporate these names in our daily lives as we go forth. And whether you're watching here in person uh, on live stream or later on down the line, we'll see you tomorrow. Inshallah, jazak la khair. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>